Aloha, people. I am back. It's been a few days, hasn't it? It's been almost a week. I'm trying to take advantage. I'm back my, not my playground. I'm back at the, the Christian school here. You guys are going to walk with me. Hope you're all doing well, day and night. I greet you with a holy kiss. Mwah. Usually I say it at the end, but I'm going to do it now. Sorry, i am uh, got to get my stand. I thought I'd just go, ah, I'm going to get out of the car and I'm going to start a conversation already. Because I realize it's been like six days since I made a video. And I'm trying to beat the sunset. Because it's getting dark early now. It's October 21st. Okay. And 2024. Boy, oh boy. I made a video yesterday. Um, I uploaded it. It's really short. It's linking to another video. I was going to make a community post about that UN Pack for the Future Summit that just went down in September. Yeah. Where all countries, every country on earth, voted in favor of it. It's 56 points. Maybe I'll, I'll upload that video and if, if I, or a community post. Watch the video. 29 minutes of your life. It's worth it um, to know the 56 points of uh, what the scriptures talk about in the unveiling of Jesus Christ. It's happening. I've been watching for a while. And there's a person they talk about that I've known for about a year. A lot of interesting stuff. Uh-oh. Uh oh I smell skunk. I smell skunk. Oh, oh. It's... I got a neighbor that he smokes weed. And some, it's like smells like skunk weed sometimes. And I'm like, I won't say his name, but I'll, I'll say, I'll call him D, okay? And it's funny because I'm like, D, are you smoking a joint right now? Or it's like, especially when it's dark out and he's sitting on the front porch right where I parked my car. And I'm like, D, are you smoking weed? Or is there actually a skunk hide? It's dark in this parking lot. Like, and he's like, no, I'm smoking. And I'm like, okay, damn, that almost smells like Pepe Le Pew. Freaking skunk weed. Anyways. Anyhow, I'm going to get my tripod out. Anyways, I hope you're... Anyways, what I was talking about the video is... Uh, it's uh, on the doorstep, people. We're at the doorstep. 2025 is going to get real interesting. By the end of this year, well, heck, our American brethren... Yeah, things are going to get... Uh, they got two weeks to your selection there. And uh, we'll see how that goes. What uh, plays out that one. Sorry. All right, thanks for bearing with me here. I mean, if anyone's watching me... They're like, what the hell is this woman doing? <laughs> not, not being a professional YouTuber. That's what I'm doing. Hang on, I gotta. I love this tripod. This is the best thing my husband could have ever got me, for like so cheap too. All right, it's a selfie stick. I don't feel like walking. Okay, so my little playground. Like I said, winter's coming, and uh, it's a beautiful day today. It was 25 degrees Celsius. Gorgeous. Um, but it gets dark fast. Anyways, uh, what am I yapping? I'm in yapping. Three minutes. So, if I upload the video or if I do a community post, I'll link below. I'll link, you know what? I'll link the video below this one, okay? Since I'm talking about it, I didn't plan on talking about it. Like, I made this, like, video in, in my chair last night. Like, it was, like, two minutes long talking about it. I was going to link to it. But I'm going to link below this one. Watch it, okay? The people that are presenting it, the two people, are Christians. You know what? God love the Christians that are paying attention, though. No, seriously. They do a lot of research. And uh, I had been looking to try and find out all the points of that UN Pact for the, um, the summit, the Pact of the Future Summit. And uh, it outlines it. They do go through all 56 points. And it's only 29 minutes long. They keep it, you know, short, sweet, and to the point, and add some stuff in. And uh, I would have to agree with everything they're saying. And at the very end, there's a seal. The king of king of England made. It's called the Astrocarta. You should see this. I'll probably make a community post with the two pictures I took right from the royal website of the Terra Carta and the Astrocarta. Very interesting times we live in. It's terrifying and exciting at the same time because our time is short. I always get sad though when the Christians are like, we're going to get out of here for the seven years and it's like, no you're not. And I feel really bad. But you know what? Christ is still being preached. Apostle Paul does say that, right? Christ is being preached. Even though the doctrines are wrong, he's still being preached. And you know what? Most of us came out of Christianity. So, we are still here, and while we're still here, there's still time to herald the good news. And with that being said, 
I'm going to read from this. Daily thoughts from scripture. The, they're at the binders for those who ordered one of the devotionals. They're at the, the binders. They had an election in British Columbia where he lives and they're all backlogged. They're being bound right now doing the binding. So I guess it takes time. It's a, it's a pretty thick book. I got my bookmarks. Like it's, you know, that's large print too. So it takes time to print that. So uh, it's any time now. Okay. Uh, you'll all get the email from me. Anyways, but I'm going to read because I've been doing some unsearchable riches, but the problem with it, even though it's great reading, they're really long. And unless I make a 45 minute video, it's really, really long. And people don't want to watch videos and I don't want to make 15 parts, right? Because then people get annoyed, right? So, um, I wish, may, and also so my phone can't support it. I've been yip yapping for like five minutes. Okay, anyway. So, what should I read? I got two places marked. Well, you know what? Yeah, I've got the one is from October 22nd, which is tomorrow. It's called The Days Are Wicked. And the other one I had marked is from October 14th. It's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. You know what? I am actually going to um, read the first one, Days Are Wicked, and then I'm going to end with that Ephesians 2, because you know what? We, have, we are blessed. We are absolutely blessed. I got crap falling out everywhere. Uh, my, oh, my bookmarks. And I'm horrible. If you're a book lover, I dog ear. Oh, I'm bad. I'm so bad. Anyway. So, let's get on it. While I could still see and read. The Apostle Paul. This the days are wicked. They are indeed. We see it all around us. It's this crazy town. Okay, I'm, I'm going to adjust myself. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. I was just freestyling it, as usual. It's not usual. I'm depressed as hell, but I got a smile on my face today. I don't know. My hair looks kind of good. And, uh, you know, <laughs> the weather was nice. I don't know. I I never know what I'm going to wake up to, how I'm going to feel, how, if I'm going to be in pain. Pain is not too bad today because the weather was nice. And uh, I'm happy to make a video. So let's get on it. So this is The Days Are Wicked. Which goes in line with it, because I didn't... <laughs> that's funny, because I didn't know what I was going to say this first part of this video. The Apostle Paul tells us this concerning the days he lived in. Be observing accurately then, brethren, how you are walking, not as unwise, but as wise, reclaiming the era, for the days are wicked. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. This could as easily be said for every day since and before Paul wrote that, because not only are we told the days are wicked, but this entire eon is called a wicked eon who gives himself for our sins, so that he might extricate us out of the present wicked eon according to the will of our God and Father, to whom the glory of the eons, of the eons, amen. Galatians chapter one, verses four and five. Paul tells us to be reclaiming the era in these wicked days. The era he's talking about is the era of salvation in which Christ is calling out a people for himself. We read of this in 2 Corinthians chapter six, verse two. I still smell that skunk and I hope it's not near me. Oh, Lord, just keep it away from me. Thank you. For he is saying, it is a season acceptable, I reply to you, and in a day of salvation I help you. Lo, now is a most acceptable era. Lo, now is a day of salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. When we look around, we can be easily frustrated with all that is happening that would seem to dwarf the evangel of Christ. Ain't that the truth? Causing many to, who believe to throw their hands in the air and say, enough, this is too much. What good is coming of the evangel of Christ? That's <laughs> what I, just, I talk about. Oh my goodness. The Lord, you're funny. Especially when we see that all is happening in these, what all is happening in these wicked days. Political unrest, religious intolerance, health scares, environmental disruptions, man's inhumanity to man and animals and to the entire earth. What good is coming of this evangel? This is why Paul tells us to be observing accurately then. Brethren, how you are walking, not as unwise, but as wise. In Colossians, Paul writes, in wisdom be walking toward those outside, reclaiming the era, your word always being with grace, seasoned with salt, perceiving how you must answer each one. That's Colossians chapter four, verses five and six. We, the believer, 
know that this is a wicked eon. The days are wicked. We know that is in accord with the plan of God. So with that, we know that God is in control. We also know that salvation is not a fire escape from these wicked days. It is a gift. A gift that we are to walk in as wise stewards, not allowing this wicked eon to overcome us. Thank you for this, Brother Rick and Lord. Jesus, for this. I need to hear this. I'm sure somebody else does too. We are to walk in wisdom toward those who are outside of Christ, let them see that we have in us that sets us apart from those these wicked days that overpower most who are not in Christ. We are to speak of the grace and kindness of God that is not only in us who believe, but is displayed to the entire world during these wicked days. Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 635, Moreover, be loving your enemies, and be doing good, and be lending, accepting nothing from them. And your wages will be vast in the heavens, and you'll be the sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. As we observe these wicked days, we the believer should be the ones who see the kindness of God, not only in ourselves, oh, yeah, no, see, sorry, who see the kindness of God, not only ourselves, but to all, we should do as we observe from God. Be kind, be kind, I'm not that in. These days are wicked, and this eon is wicked. But we are not of this world. So now Paul tells us, I am entreating you then, brethren, by the pities of God, to present your bodies a sacrifice, living, holy, well-pleasing to God, your logical divine service, and not to be configured to this eon, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For you to be testing what is the will of God, good and well-pleasing and perfect. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Do not be configured to the Sion. Do not build your life and belief around what you see, but reclaim what you know in Christ. Renewing your thought, thoughts in Him every moment of every day. And in doing this, as we all walk in these wicked days, we will be reclaiming the era, the era of salvation in which He, Christ, is helping us. As Paul told us, in a day of salvation, I help you in these wicked days. Yeah, amen. Huh, not 12 minutes. And the other one I had goes further. The, it's an encouraging message there, considering what I was just talking about. This is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. This is our expectation. So we look around us. Look, look up. That in the oncoming eons, he should be displaying the transcendent riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. In the oncoming eons, we who have been saved in his grace will be the display of his grace to those who know nothing of his grace. Although many believe that God will no longer be displaying his grace to his creation, both on earth and among the celestials after Christ returns, the truth is he will. And he'll be displaying his grace through us, the believers. This grace of God will be realized by celestial messengers in the oncoming eons as it is displayed through and to us who are saved in it and by it now. We who are believers, the body of Christ, will display it in the oncoming eons, eons to the celestial beings. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8 and 10, To me, less than the least of all saints, was granted this grace to bring the evangel of the untraceable riches of Christ to the nations and to enlighten all as to what is the administration of the secret, which has been concealed from the eons in God, who creates all, that now may be made known to the sovereignties and the authorities among the celestials through the ecclesia, the multifarious wisdom of God. All creations groaning and travailing, even that skunk that's somewhere around here in Sprague is waiting for our revealing as well. Little squirrels over there, waiting for our, all creations groaning and travailing as we travail within ourselves, all of creation, in the heavens and on earth. John tells us in the unveiling of Jesus Christ of the lambkin slain from the disruption of the world. John chapter 13, verse 8. 
Before the first man ever sinned, there was already in God's plan a sacrifice, remedy for sin. Already before there was a human created, he had made an atonement for sin. This atonement was made for those celestial beings was made for those celestial beings that rebelled against God as well. This was is one reason why God in his wisdom brought the evangel of grace through Paul to the nations, that through the, the, those called out now from the nations, as well as the Jews, who are partakers of his grace, will be the ones who will make it known to the sovereignties and authorities among the celestials. Every believer should know this, but many it seem are ignorant to this truth that he is making known to us the secret of his will in accord with his delight, which he purposed in him, to have an administration of the complement of the eras to head up all in the Christ, both that in the heavens and that on the earth. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. We are the complement of the eras. We are those who will deliver his message of grace to all inhabitants on earth as well as in the, the celestial beings. Peter tells of these messengers, angels, who are longing to know these things concerning his grace and salvation that was known by the prophets, but they could not yet receive it because Jesus Christ had not yet come. The prophets of old did their utmost to discover and obtain the salvation. They did not find it. I'll turn the page. But they prophesied of this grace that has now come to you. They tried hard to discover to what time and to what sort of circumstances the Spirit of Christ working in them was to referring. For he foretold the sufferings of Christ and the glories that should follow them. It was then made clear to them that they were dealing with matters not meant for themselves but for you. It is these very matters which have been made plain to you by those who preach the gospel to you in the same Spirit sent from heaven. And these are facts to command the interest of the very angels. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10-12. The concordant New Test, literal New Testament says, concerning the angels into which messengers are yearning to peer. I love that. The, the King James Version says, which things the angels desire to look into. Now until the oncoming eons, they will know of this grace and self. Not until the oncoming eons will they know of this grace and salvation, and then it will be displayed to them through Christ's Ecclesia. As Paul tells us in Ephesians, that in the oncoming eons, he should be displaying the transcendent riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. That now may be made known to the sovereignties and the authorities among the celestials through the Ecclesia, the multifarious wisdom of God. Salvation through grace is not just for earth dwellers. It is for those who dwell in the celestials as well. Amen. I had to pick up my stuff, my bookmarks. Huh, funny how it starts with a message of what's all the evil that's going on in this wicked eon, and God ends it with, he, he knew, ends it with something beautiful for those on earth and those the celestials. I, grace and peace to you all. I greet you with a holy kiss. It's 18 minutes now. I'm going to wrap this up. I still smell that skunk. God bless that little skunk. He's just doing his skunk stuff. You know, he's just protecting himself. Stinky, though. It's got to be a skunk somewhere over there, yonder. Anyways, there's dogs over there. Remember some of my videos past in this playground, the, the dogs that were barking, and they just wanted to say hello? Yeah, probably the skunk. It's a little early for the skunks to come out. It's not dark yet, but I see some of the young ones come out. Anyways, it is autumn, and... Winter will be fast approaching. I hope you're all doing well, like I said. I'll talk to you all again soon. I'll try and I, you know what? It is what it is. I mean, make videos as the Spirit of God moves me. Talk to you all again soon. Be encouraged. Despite the evil times, God is in control.